There was only 6,500 of these consoles made. I paid $124 for it, and it is the Taco Bell Gold PlayStation 4. This video is sponsored by Whatnot. More on them in a minute. The seller said that they bought this broken and they had a friend try to fix it. So this should be interesting. So I can already tell it's dirty, but let's make sure it powers on, especially because it wasn't necessarily shipped the best or packaged the best for shipping. And the seller said that the disk drive wasn't working. So let's see if it turns on first and then we'll see if it'll play a disk. Okay, does the disk drive have power? It does. And it seems to turn on so far. Got a blue light and we've got a white light. Okay, and we do have something on the screen. Let's try and play disc and see what it does. Now, as I went to get this disc, it actually just started pulsing blue. So it was white and now we have the blue light of death. That is very strange. Makes me kind of wonder if the clamp isn't tight. So I'm gonna try tightening that clamp first and see if that'll get it working. But this isn't the best news because that might mean that the solder balls underneath the APU are either not attached correctly or it's possible that they're oxidizing. So I'm not sure that I want to keep this motherboard in here. We might have to replace it with a different one, but let's get it open up and check out that clamp first and see if tightening those screws will help. It is possible we have a hard drive issue, but that's unlikely. Every once in a while that'll cause a blue light of death, but not usually. It's just dirty inside. Got some missing screws but we gotta get down to here. And now we can take this metal plate off. And it actually looks okay. The screws weren't as tight as they could be, but they weren't too bad. Let's see, do we have, yep, all the thermal pads are there. Okay, so I'm gonna put this plate back on and then we'll start it up again and see what it does. Okay, so blue flashing light. Let's see if that turns to white and stays white. Okay, we do have something on the screen and we do have a solid white light, that's good news. So now it's back to the blinking blue light. The seller did say that it works like one out of 20 tries. I thought they were saying that it will load a game and play one out of 20 tries, but I think they might have been saying it will start up one out of 20 tries. This makes me think we might have a hard drive issue, so I'm gonna replace that first and see what happens. Coming up on Monday, March 18, I'm gonna be selling a whole bunch of this stuff that you see me fix in these videos on a live auction on Whatnot. Whatnot is a live auction format where you can actually see and interact with sellers. Unlike other auction platforms where you just have a bunch of photos and a description of the item, on Whatnot, you can see the item you're trying to buy in a video, and you can also chat with the seller and ask them questions about the item. Now, I sell a lot of electronics, but there's lots of different categories of things you can buy on Whatnot. Now, if you watch very many of my videos, you know I fix all sorts of stuff, from this Donkey Kong tabletop arcade to the Taco Bell Edition piece PS4 I'm working on in this video to various handhelds as well. The best thing about my live auction is that Whatnot is sponsoring a PlayStation 5 bundle giveaway. But in order to enter the giveaway, you do have to be there live in person. These are only a few of the things I'll be selling. I've got lots more great stuff. And we're also gonna be doing other giveaways other than just this PS5. So once again, I'd love to have you hang out with us on Monday, March 18 at 10 a.m. I'll put a link right in the description. Here's how you sign up. The first thing you need to do is go to the description of this video and click the link. My invite link will give new users $10 off of their first purchase. After you click the link, you'll need to create an account on the web. Then you'll just need to download the Whatnot app. You can use your login info from your web account to log into the app. Then all you have to do is search for me, Tronics Fix, bookmark my live stream, and then join on the day of the live stream. So out with the old hard drive, in with the replacement hard drive. And this one, I just had this laying around in the shop. It already has the uh, carrier cage in it, whatever you want to call it. So we don't need to swap that over. All right, now let's see what happens. Okay, cannot start the PS4. That's normal. And we need to put some new software in this thing. All right, we've got the system software on this USB stick. 
Okay, so far so good. I did notice the fan starting to ramp up towards the end of it installing that software or downloading the software onto the console. So we definitely have some overheating issues on this one. Okay, flashing blue light. Is it gonna go to the white? Come on. Oh, there we go. We got a solid white light. That is great news. That means that we probably just had a faulty hard drive in this. So I'm gonna finish getting it set up. Just make sure there are no other problems there. But we gotta get this thing taken apart and give it a really good cleaning. And I'm guessing the thermal paste is probably pretty bad on this one. And before I turn it off, let's check the disk drive. Eh. Okay, it looks like it reads the disk just fine. I'm gonna take the disk drive apart and clean that laser though, and also the rollers, because I feel like they're probably also pretty gross. And just with it sitting right in the dashboard, I can already hear the fan starting to ramp up again, so this definitely has an overheating problem that we need to address as well. Try over here, same thing over there. Now let's see how bad it looks under the bottom cover. Oh, actually this looks really clean here, other than the fan. They definitely, did something with the disk drive. Looks like they took it apart, so I don't know. I don't know why they had it apart. I feel like I should take it apart and just re-look at everything and make sure it's all how it should be. I need to at least clean the laser, so I'll take it apart to do that at least. I am glad that it seems like it was a hard drive issue and not an APU issue. That means we can just keep this motherboard in here. All right, let's have a look. Oh yeah, so that's crazy. So whoever took this apart and cleaned it, the friend that cleaned it, they didn't replace the thermal paste. So this is just stock thermal paste. And part of the reason that it's overheating or almost overheating is because once you break the seal, especially thermal paste that's kind of like dried and set, once you break the seal, it's not going to have the same connection between the APU and the heatsink. So that thermal connection just isn't there how it should be. And once again, another PlayStation that is going to be fixed by the perfect amount of thermal paste. We'll get to that in a minute though. We got to get down to this fan and, and also the heatsink and make sure it's all clean. I feel like the heatsink is probably plugged. Let's check it out. And, oh, it's not as bad as I thought. It's definitely gross. That's definitely a part of the problem but not as bad as I thought it would be. So we'll get that cleaned and the fan cleaned, and then we can get this part back together and get to that thermal paste problem. Just gonna loosen it with my brush, and we'll use a little bit of compressed air and blow this all out really well. This part though is probably one of the worst parts. There we go, now that's what I'm talking about. Now this thing can breathe. I always like to check the bearings on the fan, make sure they spin nice and free. This one actually has kind of like a, it's got a ticking noise or a ticking feel to it. I can't, you can't hear it, but I can feel it. That tells me that there's a problem in the bearings of this fan, so I'm just gonna replace the fan instead of cleaning this one. It, it probably will work for a while, but at some point, the bearings are just gonna go all the way bad and it'll likely actually cause noise at some point before too long. And here's our replacement fan, much better. And I'm just gonna clean out the fan cavity real quick. Gotta make sure this part's clean since we're putting a nice clean fan in here. Better, I'm gonna go use a little compressed air and blow this all out, then we'll start the assembly. Before we get to the thermal paste, let's take a look at this disk drive. I do want to clean the laser and those rollers off, so I'm going to do that next. And just what I thought, it's pretty dirty in here. I'm really glad I decided to take a little extra time to take this thing apart. Kind of surprised this thing took a disk in as well as it did, actually, just looking at it. Yeah, look at this thing. So much dust and grime in the whole thing. Here, watch this, this will be a fun trick. Look at that, so much griminess. Eh, 
All right, now we'll get these rollers installed. So the first one snaps in. This one, we put the bar in right here. This part goes in this little uh, hole over here. And then we put the bar in here and turn it until it goes all the way in, which it is all the way in. And then we can just snap it in place like that. And now the metal plate. Got to make sure the tabs in the front align. And then it just slides right on. Now I'm much more confident in how good this disk drive is going to work long term. So I'm going to get it installed back in the console. Then we'll take care of that thermal paste issue. We're just taking a look at this board and these ports are all just like caked. And look, this this one, there's just like dust <laughs> caked in there. It's, such, it's like packed in. Got to take care of that. I don't want to put this thing all back together with these ports that are so gross. Kind of surprised the HDMI port worked because there was a bunch of gunk down in there too. Now let's take care of this thermal paste issue. Yeah, this is, it's very crusty on here. Still can't believe somebody did all the work to sort of clean this thing, but didn't put new thermal paste in. This thing's gonna run so good when we're done. And now the part we've all been waiting for, the perfect amount of thermal paste. Now this thing's for sure fixed. Let's get it back together. And we're missing two screws right there. I hate to do all this work and have missing screws. Let's see if we can find some out of my parts bin. Oh, there we go. One, two. And there we go. It's all back together. Let's plug it in and make sure it works and make sure it plays a disc. And disc drive has power, power button. Okay, white light. Let's see if the disc goes in. Nice and smooth. It's spinning up nicely. We got a disc spinning here. Let's make sure it shows up over here, and it does. So we were able to save yet another special edition game console. If you want to see a video where I try to fix a special edition Xbox Series X, I'll put a link for that video up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see what was wrong and if I was able to fix it. Thanks so much for watching today, and I hope you have a good one.